All right, so virtual memory, what is it? It is virtual addresses that are translated into real ad physical addresses that the CPU will use to uh, actually gather the data that we desire in our programs. Now, why would we want to do this? Why would we create these fake addresses that our program uses if we're just going to translate them later? Isn't it just extra work for the CPU to do that we could be spending on doing other more useful work? Well, there's two good reasons for having virtual memory. And the main ones are space and security. Okay, so what do I mean by these things? So let's consider a computer that's been running for a while, and this here on the right is its memory space. And we have a, another program, program four, that we wanna run. The problem is, each of these individual free spaces are not enough to contain the memory that program four needs to actually run. But combined, uh, there is enough memory. Unfortunately, due to how we've designed our computer, we can't exactly uh, split program four up really easily in order for it to fit in all of these spaces. Um, so if we have just our normal physical memory addresses and we want to be able to run this program, we will be out of luck. But with virtual memory, we can. Uh, that's because we could say map this part of the memory that program four needs to this spot the middle half to this spot and the bottom half to this spot and we would have enough memory and to program four it would look like it would have a contiguous block of memory um, because all of the virtual addresses would be contiguous but the physical addresses could be wherever they need to be in the physical address space. The CPU would handle all of the translations for us and we can have our cake and eat it too. So what about security? Um, how does that play into virtual memory? In this example here, as you can see, all the programs are in sequential order and it would not be that difficult if we know program two and program three are here for program one to just reach in and grab or read or edit some data that it's not supposed to, either accidentally or maliciously. So if say program two holds some important information like social security numbers or bank uh, information, a malicious program might want to sneak in and take a look at those details. And if everything is just contiguous in the memory like this, it's a lot easier for malicious actors to find that information when they're not supposed to. Whereas when everything is jumbled around in physical memory, it's a lot harder to just buffer overflow and then find some useful information. You're just going to find a lot of fragments of programs without a lot of useful data stuck in there. So now that we have an intuition of what virtual memory is and why it's important, let's get into how virtual memory actually works at the physical level. So here's our virtual address here at the bottom, right? And we're going to split it up into two sections. Now this is a 32-bit address, which means that our blocks are typically around four kilobytes. These first 20 bits here are going to offset into our page table. And then the last 12 bits are going to offset into our physical block. So how this would happen is if you say dereference a pointer, the computer needs to figure out where is this pointer going? The user wants the data that's at that uh, address. So the computer would first offset into the page table. So let's say this uh, address is going here. Uh, we look up that in the page table and the page table tells us, okay, you are looking for the physical memory block named 495. So we go to that physical memory block. And then in the physical memory block, 
uh, we take our offset and we add that to the base address of the physical memory block and then we get to our data. This is about the simplest virtual memory setup we can have. Just one page table, one layer of indirection. But let's think about if we have a 64-bit address. In that case, we could have a page table that's utterly massive. If we think about it, if we double the size of both of these, uh, this would be 40 bits and this would be 24 bits. This is 2 to the 40. We need to store a page table that has 2 to the 40 entries, which is huge. That's about <laughs> this many entries, um, which would fill up memory, it would fill up storage, uh, it would be way too big. So to combat this, we need multi-layer page tables. So here's an example of a multi-level page table. And this helps us get around the size constraints that we have with bigger memory addresses because we can have a smaller offset for the first page, uh, which makes it a reasonable size. And then each secondary or tertiary page doesn't necessarily have to exist. We can just create the ones that we actually need. And this cuts down on the amount of space that we need to fill up for these virtual page tables um, at the cost of a little bit more complexity. Um, but as you can see, it's the same similar concept. You take the first offset, you offset into the first page table, then we take the second offset, offset into the second page table, and then we get our base address to the uh, physical memory block, and then we offset into that with our third offset and get to the actual data that we want. That has been virtual memory. Thank you so much for joining.